In our last few videos, we've defined and illustrated aggregate demand and both short run and long run aggregate supply. In this video, it's time to put all of those curves together into our ADAS model and explain how short run equilibrium in the ADAS model is determined and talk about the different possible levels of output a country could be experiencing, illustrating a few different scenarios in an ADAS model. Short run equilibrium in the ADAS model refers to whatever the current level of national output and the current price level is given the levels of aggregate demand and aggregate supply prevailing in an economy at a particular period of time. As we're going to see in the video, the short run equilibrium level of GDP and the price level a country experiences at a given time can be either greater than or less than the full employment level of output and price level. We're now going to distinguish between what we call negative or recessionary output gaps and positive or inflationary output gaps. Then we'll use the graphs here to illustrate these different possible scenarios. A country is experiencing a negative output gap when equilibrium national output, which we'll call YE, and the equilibrium price level, which we'll call PLE, are less than the full employment level of output and the full employment price level. This scenario is called a recessionary gap because the country is producing a level of output below full employment, therefore the country is experiencing what we call a recession. A recession is defined as a period of negative economic growth. In other words, the output a country is producing is decreasing over time. Let's turn now to our first graph to illustrate and explain the different causes of a negative output gap and show what that would look like in our graph. So I'm going to draw actually both the short run and the long run aggregate supply curves in this model. Then I'm going to add my aggregate demand curve, which you'll recall is downward sloping, showing an inverse relationship between the price level in a country and the level of output demanded by households, firms, the government, and foreigners. Let's go ahead and identify our short run equilibrium level of output and price level in this economy. Short run equilibrium is found where aggregate demand intersects short run aggregate supply. In my graph, that's right here. Given the current level of demand from households, firms, the government, and foreigners, and the current level of supply of goods and services by the nation's firms, we have an equilibrium level of output, which I'll label YE. That corresponds with an equilibrium price level, which I will label PLE. This country is, in a short-run equilibrium, below the full employment level of output. This country is experiencing what we call a recession. Output is below full employment, as you can see. And the price level is lower than it would be if the economy were at full employment. So this is our full employment price level. So we have prices that are lower than what the country would experience if it were at full employment, and output that is lower than the country would experience if it were at full employment. So notice that over here I've described the situation as a recessionary gap. I can show that gap on my graph as the difference between the equilibrium level of output and the full employment level of output. So this distance right here between YE and YFE is known as the recessionary gap. Now remember from an earlier unit that real GDP is measured in dollars usually or any other currency, British pounds or euros or Japanese yen. So this is actually a dollar value here. We could determine the size of a country's recessionary gap based on how much smaller its actual GDP is in terms of dollars than it would be if this country were experiencing full employment. So what is going on in a country with a recessionary gap? Recessionary gaps are definitely not something that countries desire to have because you're gonna see higher unemployment You're going to see falling wages, most likely, in the long run at least. Not in the short run when wages are fixed, but in our next video we'll talk about why wages would fall in the long run. And you're going to see uh, deflation or disinflation, which is lower inflation. That may sound like a good thing because consumers get to buy stuff more cheaply. However, it's a bad thing if you're a business owner and if you're a worker who wants to find a job. Because when there's deflation in an economy, firms reduce their output, lay off workers, and are less optimistic about the future. In fact, that brings us to another consequence of recessionary gap, which is reduced confidence. And this, this refers to both households and firms.
A country experiencing a negative output gap or a recessionary gap is experiencing some of these negative results. You've got higher unemployment, falling wages, deflation, reduced confidence among households and firms. A country's short-run equilibrium level of output can also take place at a level of output beyond full employment. So this is a situation called a positive output gap. A positive or inflationary output gap occurs when the equilibrium level of output, we'll call that YE, and the equilibrium price level, we'll call that PE, are greater than full employment output and the full employment price level. This occurs when output has increased to a level beyond full employment. As we're about to see, this is only possible in the short run because you'll recall from our last video that in the long run, wages will fully adjust to whatever the price level is and output will return to its full employment level. So let's go ahead and show this in our graph here. I'm going to recreate our ADAS graph with long run aggregate supply, short run aggregate supply. I forgot to label my long run AS curve. I've got to label all the curves in your graphs, guys. And this time I'm going to show an AD curve that actually intersects short run aggregate supply beyond full employment. So here's our aggregate demand. I can label my equilibrium level of national output. I'll call that YE. And my equilibrium price level, which I'll call PLE. And once again, notice that equilibrium price level and output are greater than, here's PL full employment and YFE. So this country is experiencing what we call an inflationary gap. An inflationary gap. And if, again, this could also be measured in dollars because GDP is measured in dollars. So if this is a country that has a full employment output, a full employment real GDP of let's say a trillion dollars, and its current level of output is $1.1 trillion, then that country is experiencing a positive output gap or an inflationary gap of $100 billion. Again, that may sound like a good thing. However, there are some negative outcomes or results from an inflationary gap. So let's take a few brief notes over here. You've got higher prices, obviously. Higher prices, which sounds good for businesses, but not so good for households. It could reduce the real wealth of households, the real incomes of households. You've got rising wages. Again, great news for households. Rising wages means more money in your pocket. However, when prices are rising, it may not actually make you feel any richer. And if you're a business owner, rising wages is a really bad thing. You've got less excess capacity. There's less capacity in the economy, meaning that there are fewer resources available for firms to employ. Land is fully employed, labor is fully employed, and capital is fully employed. It's becoming impossible to increase output. So there will be reduced economic growth. This is a country approaching or at a peak in its business cycle. Recall from our lesson on business cycles that when a country approaches a peak in its business cycle, it's about to enter a recession. So a country experiencing an inflationary gap is likely to enter a period of recession and rising unemployment in the near future because the country is simply producing beyond what is sustainable in the long run. So that brings us to our final graph and our final point of analysis in this lesson on short run equilibrium in the ADS model. We've now shown a situation in which a country is experiencing a negative output gap and producing below its full employment level. We've shown a country experiencing a positive or inflationary output gap and producing beyond its full employment level. That brings us to our final situation in which the current level of output and prices is equal to the full employment level of output and prices. So full employment occurs when PLE the equilibrium price level, and YE, the equilibrium level of output, equal the full employment price level and the full employment level of output. So in other words, the country is currently producing exactly what it should be producing. It's producing what it can produce when all of its resources are fully employed and there's only certain types of unemployment. There's very low unemployment. Only workers who are entering the labor force for the first time, workers who are in between jobs voluntarily, or workers who have been replaced by technology are unemployed. So this is when current output is what the economy is capable of in the long run.
Any level of output greater than full employment is unsustainable in the long run. And any level of output below full employment is not desirable because it means the country's not achieving its full productive capacity. So let's go ahead and recreate our graph once again. Okay, I've got my LRAS and my SRAS. Now I'm going to draw my AD and notice where I draw it. I'm going to draw an equilibrium, an intersection of AD and AS that crosses right at the long run aggregate supply. So this is a country that is currently producing its full employment level of output and it's producing at the full employment price level. There is no recessionary gap. There is no inflationary gap. This country is achieving its full employment equilibrium. So we have shown now three different scenarios, possible levels of output a country could experience in the short run. We've shown a country with a recessionary gap. That was our first graph here. A recessionary gap occurs when equilibrium is below the full employment level and the equilibrium price level is below the full employment price level. Recessions are bad. We know that. Recession is basically a bad word in economics. It means there's higher unemployment, there's falling wages, there's deflation, and there's reduced confidence among households and firms. We've also shown an inflationary gap or a positive output gap. This is a situation in which equilibrium, Ye, is greater than full employment, Yfe. Inflationary gaps may sound good because it means output is greater than full employment, but that doesn't mean better than full employment. It means there's higher prices, there's rising wages, there's reduced real incomes as households find it harder and harder to buy the goods and services that they so demand. There will also be reduced economic growth and almost certainly a recession will follow an inflationary gap. Finally, we've got the situation in which equilibrium is equal to full employment. So this is my full employment level of output. It's where there are neither recessionary gaps nor inflationary gaps. Rather, we have price level stability, that's a full employment price level, and we have full employment output. Nearly everybody who wants a job has a job. There's no pressure for firms to raise wages. There's no pressure for workers to accept lower wages. The economy is at peace. It's at equilibrium. It's what I call the Goldilocks level of output. We've got an economy that is too hot when there's an inflationary gap. We've got an economy that's too cold when there's a deflationary or a recessionary gap. But when an economy is producing a full employment, everything is just right. This is where a country wants to be. It's one of the macroeconomic objectives, in fact. Producing at full employment means you've got macroeconomic stability. Nearly everyone has a job. The economy is growing at a stable rate. Inflation is low and stable. In our next video, we'll talk about long-run equilibrium in the ADAS model. We'll talk about how a country experiencing recessionary or inflationary gaps will ultimately adjust and return to its full employment level of output based on the principle of flexible wages and the difference between short-run and long-run in macroeconomics. Here we go. One step at a time, don't be living alone.